What if you could increase a game's frame rate by two or three times just by downloading a small program on your PC? Ghost of Tsushima running at 40 FPS? Well, you can click a button and now it's running at 120 FPS. That sounds like a pipe dream, but it is more or less what the program lossless scaling can do for you by utilizing frame generation technology. In this video, I will detail how lossless scaling works, how the generated frames look and feel, and I will describe what I think are some of the best use cases for this interesting program. Getting right into it, the multiplication of your frame rate via a lossless scaling's frame generation is not magic, and it is important to detail what lossless scaling does to increase frame rates via its frame generation, as it is fundamentally different to that which we see in DLSS3 or FSR3 frame generation. DLSS3 and FSR3 leverage the final color frame of two rendered images before the HUD is drawn, plus motion vectors for both frames, to generate the in-between frame. Motion vectors can be thought of as a cheat sheet, almost, which tells tells frame generation tech where and how objects are moving. DLSS 3 and FSR 3 have access to motion vectors since they are integrated by developers in a dedicated way into the game code. Loss of scaling is a mod and does not have access to internals of a game and it is a post process after the game has done all the rendering. So it only has access to two full rendered color images with the HUD on them and it has no access to motion vectors. Loss of scaling has to guess as to what in an image is moving. According to the developers of Lost of Scaling, the frame generation used in the modding tool utilizes a form of machine learning to more accurately generate the in-between images it makes. With the latest version, Lost of Scaling can generate two in-between frames instead of the one if you choose to. DLSS3 and FSR3 currently can only generate one in-between frame, so at max they can double your frame rate. Lost of Scaling can amplify frame rates by up to three times since it's generating potentially two in-between frames. That sounds pretty awesome, but I think based upon this description here you could imagine where the limitations might be. Compared to the other techniques, we can see what I mean. Slowing down and looping 120 FPS footage, we can see that there is a hierarchy of quality. Lossless frame generation's interstitial generated frames have more visible error taking up a larger portion of the screen, and FSR3 with its access to motion vectors fares better by a healthy margin. DLSS3 with its usage of machine learning has even less error on screen than FSR3, where there's less ghosted empty space behind the hand and sword in each generation generated frame. The larger the error per frame and the more repetition of that error over time leads to an increased likelihood that your eye will notice that something is wrong with the game's rendering in front of you, so it'll present as an artifact. On average this means you will see more errors with lossless frame generation than you would with something like DLSS 3. Though it must be said, due to the stroboscopic nature of frame generation where you have a good looking frame then a less than perfect one, it will inherently hide some of the issues in a surprising way. Sometimes it can be tough to spot something like garbled hands or a garbled sword when at 120 FPS when every other frame is essentially pristine. Your mind's eye will not always perceive it, but it is of course still there. Using Ghost of Tsushima as an example, when running around with lossless frame generation, we'll often see an outline effect around solid objects like the main character or his limbs, and these things will persist in your mind's eye while things are moving. It's almost like there's a layer of displaced air around moving objects. That is a visible error, I would say. Another error that you can see sometimes is a subtle flickering of transparent objects like shadows or particles. These don't interpolate well, so they almost look faded or at a lower frame rate than the rest of the presentation. Another issue is at the screen edges. Generated frames are going to be faking the screen edge quite a lot when the camera moves, so if you look there you will notice some distorted bubble of displacement will be happening there while you pay attention to it. The less movement though, the less obvious such an error is, and this will apply to all frame generation techniques. Tech. The last most common error you would see with lossless frame generation is in HUD elements or with the mouse cursor. As I mentioned earlier, lossless frame generation has no concept of what a HUD is and what is not, so it's going to have issues. Check out me using it in Turok Dinosaur Hunter here. Notice how the weapon wheel when it comes up looks weird and distorted as I move. If you pause a frame you can see why. Lossless scaling is having a hard time understanding what is background and what is the foreground HUD, hence the issues. 
This happens in pretty much all games, and it comes with the territory since this is just a post process, unlike DLSS 3 or FSR 3 which will have workarounds for such things. These limitations and errors I just mentioned will increase at a higher scaling factor, so using the 3x frame rate mode, for example here where there's two generated frames, we can see that the left is running 60 FPS internally, while the right is running 40 FPS internally, but they're both outputting at 120 FPS. If you pay attention, there's more to store and greater error visible over time on the right than there is on the left, as more of the frames on the right are generated and the gaps between real frames are larger in time. Running Ghost of Tsushima again in this 3x mode targeting 120 FPS makes the error in images obvious I would say. The game does look pretty fluid for a lot of the camera movement, but larger movement of characters or the camera will break the visuals I would say. 40 to 120 FPS frame generation as I'm showing here does work but I think many people will find issues at this lower refresh rate of 120 hertz that I'm showing here. I would say if you're going to use the 3x mode which triples your frame rate, then you would want to start from a higher frame rate usually on a higher refresh monitor. So on a 240 hertz monitor or higher, I think this 3x frame rate scaling mode could really sing and it could offer a compelling experience. Visuals are not the only thing you have to think about though with frame generation, as input latency is important to gameplay experience, and the way Lost of Scaling does it means that it's going to be more noticeably heavy than other frame generation techniques. In the best scenario possible with Reflex on in a game like Cyberpunk 2077 maxed out in DLSS quality mode, I can measure significant differences in input latency, including the display latency from my LG C1 OLED, the 2x mode clocked in at 99 milliseconds. The 3x mode interestingly clocks in at lower input latency of 92 milliseconds. DLSS 3 clocked in at 59 milliseconds, and without any frame generation, there's 44 milliseconds of latency. In a like for like scenario with reflex on as we're seeing here, the 2x frame generation from loss of scaling has almost double the latency of DLSS 3. And given how it's adding 48 to 55 milliseconds of latency depending upon the mode you're using, you may feel a bit of heaviness in the controls by turning it on in any game. So input latency and visuals are not exactly perfect with loss of scaling frame generation. And I think in isolation, if you look at all those negative aspects, you might be starting to think, okay, what's the point of this all? Is this really recommendable? My personal experience while using it though is anything but negative. I generally found it usually compelling, functional, and genuinely worthwhile for many titles. For modern titles that offer things like FSR 3 or DLSS 3, I obviously wouldn't recommend using it as you would be increasing latency artifacts facts and more for little gain versus traditional scaling. But for titles that lack modern integrated frame generation, then it can offer a really positive enhanced experience for fluidity, and I would highly recommend it generally. As you've probably guessed based upon the b-roll in this video, I think my favorite usage of this loss of scaling frame generation is to take titles up to a higher frame rate than they otherwise possibly could. Although the PC platform always has been the one for high frame rates since the mid 90s, not every game was always coded in a way to allow it. Take Freedom Fighters, this is a personal favorite game of mine, and this game maxes out strangely at 62 FPS. If it is unlocked to go higher, the whole game speed would go up with it. So losses frame generation, as I'm showing here, can ratchet that up to 120 FPS in its 2x mode, and you can enjoy a game with vastly increased visual fluidity on a 120 hertz screen. I think it really made the game shine again, where otherwise would kind of look framey on my setup. Same with Turok's 2015 re-release by Night Dive. While it is a great re-release, it lacked the Kex engine upgrades to allow for arbitrary frame rates, so it's been stuck at 60 FPS for the last 10 years. With lossless frame generation, I played it at a cool and unwavering 120 FPS, which I really loved, and I think this is my new current favorite way to play this game. 
Yes, the latency is increased, but in a title like this one, which is a fast FPS game, I still didn't actually have trouble with it on a mouse and keyboard, as I was definitely shooting enemies like I always have, and I was making death-defying leaps with the copious amounts of first-person platforming that this game has. So I think the best way to use loss of frame generation is taking older titles that are locked in FPS up to a higher frame rate, like Resident Evil 4 as we're seeing here. The game is locked at 60 FPS in all versions and you can bring that up to 120 FPS in the 2x mode on a 120 hertz screen or something like 180 FPS in the 3x mode on a screen with a higher refresh rate. This gives the game a new level of fluidity that you have probably not ever seen before. And I think this is the best case scenario really. These older games locked at 60 FPS. Not every game though has been fortunate to have only been locked at 60 FPS though. Some of my favorite games are locked at 30 FPS even, like Command & Conquer 3 Tiberium Wars. I love this game, but my goodness, it is so sluggish when you're commanding due to the 30 FPS. Lost is scaling frame generation in the 2x mode as I'm showing here, or the 3x mode on a VRR display, dramatically increases the fluidity of the game, though it must be mentioned on a game like this one, which requires a mouse and keyboard, the extra input latency from lossless scaling and that 30 FPS input will make the game feel sluggish on a mouse. It was borderline for me in this game and some of you may not like the way it feels. On the other hand, there's something like the original Dark Souls release, you know, the one that's locked at sub 720p at 30 FPS. Yeah, I used lossless scaling there to see what it is like. And I think in a game that uses a controller primarily as its input, like this one does here, loss of scaling's increased input latency, even at 30 FPS, was a lot more tolerable. For sure you could feel it, but it didn't get in the way of gameplay so badly as it did, for example, in Command & Conquer, where the mouse felt pretty bad, to be honest with you. Those games that already had a large amount of input latency, like Dark Souls does in its base combat, well, it's going to feel better on average than other games, especially like those which are using a mouse. So it's going to be something you're going to have to decide on a per game basis. Some titles will feel fine, while others will feel a lot worse. These are just some of the games that I tried out. Loss of scaling can really though apply to any and every game that runs in a window including emulated games, should you so wish. Like here, I'm showing something like Killzone 2 in the 2x mode. That game has a hard time running at anywhere near 60 or 120 FPS. And here, thanks to lossless frame generation, it looks a lot smoother than it otherwise would. Sure, there's more input latency, but you can deal with it on a controller, I would say. And that's a big part of using lossless frame generation. It is a mod, so you have to keep your expectations in check. And beyond the quality and latency concerns, you also have to remember that it cannot fix the game's performance. In Elden Ring, as I am showing here, it can boost the game up to 120 FPS output in the 2x mode but that will not prevent the hitching and stuttering that that game can have. It being enhanced by loss of scaling will not fix larger frame time spikes like I'm showing here. And if a game has issues with camera motion, well then they will also show up to a degree while using loss of scaling. It cannot just magically fix a game that has technical issues. It will just amplify the game's base frame rate. Another thing to watch out for is that you need to configure a game right for loss of scaling to present those generated frames well. Loss of scaling only presents fluid motion if the game is running at exactly your native refresh rate or below it with VRR. So you need to have the game at least running at half your refresh rate or lower. That means you'll need to lock the game usually by some other means to exactly one half of your refresh rate. Check out this example here in Ghost of Tsushima. Here the game is running internally between 60 and 70 FPS and lossless frame generation is trying to bring that up to 120 FPS on a 120 hertz screen. This random value between 60 and 70 FPS does not evenly divide into 120, so the visual output, as you can see, is uneven, and motion looks wrong, as we can see when the camera is turning. It's juddering all over the place. I think loss of scaling is trying to force true triple buffering, 
which can lead to improper visual smoothness as we're seeing here. To fix this, I find the best thing to do is to use special case frame rate limiter or to use in-game vSync options should they allow for things like half or third refresh rate. When using one of these two methods, I find that games will present perfectly smooth with little to no issues. You can see the big difference in side-by-sides, one using special K while one not capping the frame rate. Interestingly, I also found that Nvidia's half refresh rate vSync or RTSS do not present smoothly with loss of scaling. Perhaps they can, but I could not get smooth motion out of them, so definitely use Special K if you can. Getting to the end of this video, loss of scaling isn't exactly a perfectly magical tool that'll just triple your frame rate. You have to think of things like frame generation, input latency, and artifacts when using it. Even with those issues in mind though, I find it a powerful tool in the PC user's toolbox that you can take advantage of. It's especially great in those older games that have frame rate caps. With the frame generation from this tool, you can increase a game's fluidity in a surprising way, and I think a lot of people will end up really liking this tool for this use case. So I definitely recommend checking out lossless frame generation if you can, as I had a good time using it. And while you're using it, you can discover other nice things that the program offers, like integer scaling, as I'm showing here in Perfect Dark Zero. That game running at 720p essentially output and being integer upscaled up to 4K and looking really great as a result. But that is really all I have to say. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, and as always, this is Alex, bidding you farewell and auf Wiedersehen. Hey, <laughs> <laughs>